Okay, we're starting part four of a three-part series here. Because <laughs> that happens sometimes. Um, there's a chip in the edge of this axe, which happened right after I did the final installation with the top wedge. That's the kind of thing I hope I'll find out during the testing phase when I test before putting the top wedge in. This particular time didn't work out that way, probably because I was doing some heavy hewing on dry Osage Orange, which is one of the hardest woods that grows in this hemisphere. So, uh, I'm going to take the handle off the head, soften the steel, the, the, the bit, a little bit by re-tempering it. And that's uh, a fancy way of saying I'm gonna put it in a toaster oven for an hour at a little under 500 degrees. That should soften the steel just enough that it won't chip anymore. It may have another slight advantage that it'll be easier to maintain with a file because it should make a file cut easier. Um, it's a shame I did a, I got a really nice looking clean install on the top. I have a lot of confidence in this wedging job, but I can still nevertheless pull this wedge out because I didn't glue it in. So that's gonna involve drilling a few holes running a screw in there, clamping the screw head in device, and then striking the axe head with a mallet, and that should pull those wedge segments out. Once I separate them, I cook the axe head, uh, I can shape a new wedge. Uh, I will, of course, uh, before reinstalling it, do any regrinding that I need to do with an angle grinder. But it's a fair bit of extra work, but you know I can rescue an otherwise uh, unsaleable axe that way. So the hatchet's clamped in my bench vise. I can see one of the splits in the wedge, which is right here. I'm gonna use a center punch to start my holes that I'm gonna drill right in the middle, hopefully or close to the middle of the wedge, because the drill bit will try to creep if you don't do that. And then every little bit I'm going to say I need four or five. Holes in this one. Yeah, it's a little off center. A little bit off center. better. I'm going to drill in about an inch in each one of these. Starting to. Shouldn't do such a good job of seeing the wedges, right?
So it just took a few minutes to pull the wedge out in multiple segments. You can see a little bit of where I had to drill the holes. After the reinstallation, often there's no sign that the handle was ever pulled. There might be a little trace of it, but the strength of installation will be 100%. I have total confidence that this handle is just as good after taking it off and putting it back on as it is now. And that is why I don't like to glue wedges. The wedge is pulled. Now I'm going to use the X jig, as I call it here, and a punch to drive the handle back out. Oh, that was relatively easy. All right. This is my super fancy and high tech tempering oven. And I'm going to turn, these aren't very accurate. I'm going to turn that to a little above 450. Right now, I'm just going to bring it up to temperature. What I want to see when this axe com comes out of there is a kind of purplish color with a little bit of yellow, a little bit of blue. It's called peacock maybe more toward the blue because I because it's too hard now I'd rather it be a little on the soft side than too hard and as as the temper colors come into steel it starts off as a yellow and then as as it gets hotter it turns to kind of a purple and then to a blue so I'd rather err on the side of blue in this particular case pretty good color oh that looks nice yep some purple a little bit of yellow left but a lot of blue coming through that's what I want to see Although I see more blue on this side than this side. There's still some yellow here, so I'm going to let that side face downward for just a few more minutes toward the heat. Just a few more minutes. Four eighty-five. Nice purple. This is cooled off overnight now. And this is pretty much exactly what I was hoping for with the temper colors. A little bit of yellow, quite a bit of purple, and a little bit of blue coming through. So my hope is, and this will be determined by testing it again, that it will still hold an edge pretty well, but it won't chip anymore. So that'll take another round of testing, chopping and hewing into some really tough stuff to have confidence in that. But this is how to soften the steel a little bit if it's too hard. Of course, these colors are pretty too. And because I care a little bit about aesthetics, I'm gonna to try to not um, bring the bright metal of the bevel back any farther than I have to. So there's a couple different way, few different ways I could reprofile this to get that ding out of there 
I can just do it entirely with the hand file, which is the safest way, but that's a lot of files, a lot of strokes for my shoulders, which are aging and wearing out, but also it wears out good files to do unnecessary filing, and the good files are hard to find. I could do the bulk of it with an angle grinder, just freehand, and then finish up with a file, or I could do the bulk of it with my belt grinder, and of course then do the finish work with the file. And I think I'm going to go with the belt grinder because, being slightly concerned with aesthetics, I have the least chance of getting any scratch marks coming back farther than I want them going into that nice color patina now. And that color, those surface colors, they're just very, very much on the surface. The slightest scratch goes right through that and you just have bright metal again. So I want to keep as much of that color patina as I can. I want to use the safest method of power grinding and then do all the finish filing by hand. Definitely cuts easier than before. I don't think this file was even hardly touching it previously. You worked up a sweat, filing that back down for five or ten minutes. Started with the coarse double cut file, finished with the fine single cut. Now I have a burr, or what's called a wire edge, across the entire length of the bit. And I'll make this shave with any luck just by changing my filing technique. So I previously, for the heavy filing, I was filing away from the blade. Now I'm going to file into the blade very, very lightly and carefully. Until I take that burr off. I'll just flip this back and forth. And a few passes on each side. It's a good sign that it files to razor sharp easily. Now let's go see if it cuts and stays sharp and doesn't ding up. Or, or uh, not ding up, but chip, rather. So I have this same stock of Osage Orange that I suspect was the culprit for chipping this hatchet, although Dry Osage Orange, Bone Dry Osage Orange, one of the hardest and most dense woods that grows in the Western Hemisphere. You know, just hacking away at this stuff is asking a lot of any axe. But again, I would, if an axe edge does perform suboptimally, I just want it to get dull or even have the edge roll over and not chip. So chipping is the worst thing. 
if you have to sharpen a little more frequently with the file, that's fine, so be it. Um, but when your edge is chipping away, that tool is not going to last long. So I'm just going to do another decent round of hewing on this stuff, see how the edge holds up. What I want to see is no chips, even if it is, you know, not, not uh, quite biting the thumbnail at the end of the work session. through a knot. I think we're all right. The third of these billets here. Not. Oh, pretty small one. Proper knot right there. There we go. Yeah, if it's going through Osage knots, it's okay. Not really quite shaven anymore, but I did wouldn't certainly not expect it to. Oh, yeah, right in the major cut zone. It's just not quite shaving. Still shaving at the top and bottom. I'm finally going to declare this a correctly built axe. So I've just spent another 10 or 12 minutes hewing into bone dry Osage orange went through a couple of knots even there's no damage to the edge at all in fact it's still shaving in a couple spots I'm happy with an axe that works like this now um, there is a contingent of axe people out there who would who would have a problem with this there's a tiny cosmetic defect at the top of the eye and that that's because I had to uninstall and reinstall it and I had a tiny bit of chip out of the locus at the top of the eye, which is utterly inconsequential for the function of the tool. I build tools for work. I will put, you know, my name behind this thing, or I might just keep it and enjoy using it because, because I had to uh, file it again to file out the chip. I spent a couple extra minutes with the file and it actually hews very nicely now. So I would consider this a good splitter, a good hewer, and okay at chopping it's just a little bit sticky the, the the release is just a little bit less than i would like but this is a really good all-rounder 
And I guess uh, we have the additional benefit of that, that uh, colored patina, right? <laughs> Was it worth the extra work? I don't know. So if you want to see how this thing got born, check out the previous three parts to this series. <laughs> We're in the accidental fourth part now. And appreciate you watching, and please check out some of my other content as well.